Hey all and I hope you're doing well. Today's video is more so going to be a chatty one just about my current thoughts and um, what I'm thinking. Um, so yeah, this video is going to be mostly about the talk on perfume addiction. When I talk about addiction, um, it could be within any sort of level. Some people can find that buying a perfume once a month um, to be an addiction or two or rack it up to thousands of pounds. Um, so this video is going to be more of a still video and it's just going to be me talking um, because I feel like people do tend to enjoy these videos where you just really sit down and have a chat and more of a podcast start. Um, start. <laughs> more of a podcast style of video. So I find these to be really great. So when you bounce ideas also when just recommendations and just opinions from other people, it's a really interesting um it's a really interesting field to enter into. So yes, let's begin. So I wanted to talk about my personal experiences for when it comes to, you know, the whole perfume addiction side of things and I think that I touched on this very briefly uh, on one of my previous uh, chatty videos about how we blind buy and why we blind buy, why we do it, and really there are many reasons. And I think there was another YouTuber, I can't remember her name for the life of me, but she did have a um, little sit down chat about how it's quite toxic being in the perfume community. Now, I don't think it's the perfume community's fault in any way, shape or form because every individual has the ability to choose whether to click on that video or not. No one is putting a gun to their head saying you must watch this. You know, when it comes to any sort of situation that influences you to buy things, it really should come down to the person rather than the influence because you can't stop influence. Influence is all around you and there is no way around it. You can either try and avoid it as much as possible um, or you could just, yeah, just watch it and be influenced. You can limit the intake of content that you do um, or not. It really is a very personal decision. So with, with any sort of, you know, addictive traits, you would rather completely stop usually doing what you're doing so you can avoid jumping back into the addictions. Now people go into these um, so-called addictions when they are sometimes at a really low point in their life and it's the only thing that really gets that dopamine rush. Um, instead of going for a run or exercising or just really leaving the house because some people with this um, this work culture, because many of us now work from home, we all just sit there and it's just so tempting to watch one video after the other after the other and just get influenced and then you go on for Grantica and then it's this whole thing and then you end up spending a couple hundred pounds, some, some other people spend a couple of thousand pounds, maybe one thousand pounds and it really isn't sustainable because you have a job that will maybe pay you um, say less than two thousand pounds and you have rent to pay and you have bills to pay you have to contribute in some way shape or form if you are not in that position then you are very lucky um or very blessed may i say but even then it's it's wiser to invest your money i suppose in other things that will make you money rather than make you lose money um it the thing is i'm not telling you stay away from fragrances i'm not recommending that i would say that if you are keen on fragrances i always mention in my videos it's always great to have a sample or a decant because in a way you have that fragrance and if you're not going to use it up then what's the point in buying a full size product now even with me and my current collection I do have uh, a few full-size fragrances, but I don't have a massive, vast collection. I am so thankful and grateful for that because I actually stopped myself. I kind of understood that, hey, I do have other commitments and I shouldn't really be sitting around here 
and just, you know, buying a bunch of these fragrances for a dopamine hit. So from my personal experience, I was at a really low point in my life for a few years, actually. I think this was around um, post-COVID or something. And it just, my, my whole... Um, mentality kind of shifted and it was a very strange uh, phase for me to enter in life and it it's different for everyone and but when you enter into a season of just being down and sad instead of buying perfumes for a dopamine hit it really is important to get to the root cause before you end up spending thousands of pounds and just buying a ton of perfumes you don't really need or you will eventually want to sell after a couple of tries or a month or two it's or it's just going to sit on the shelf it's really it really is very eye-opening and I guess even in history history repeats itself and people kind of do the same things over and over again which I don't know why sometimes we are biologically hardwired to, to do that but you know other than that it's just you know you need to be able to go to the root cause of the problem even in the medical field instead of just trying to fix like these random things around you which sometimes is a good fix for some people so say for example stop watching youtube videos and then you know um start exercising or so on and so forth yes that's great you're working around the the problem the the main essential problem that you're having but you also have to really focus on the root problem sometimes when people do these other things around them the root problem almost kind of disappears but then maybe reappears after a period of time but um if you really do focus on healing that root issue or problem or addiction or i don't whatever it is you know that that feeling that causes maybe the addiction um of just being low down or sat in the dumps or you don't enjoy your job or um, your your partner isn't treating you well or your family are just disrespecting you all the time you know there could be multiple reasons why you feel like you want to just delve into fragrance, uh, fragrances to get that dopamine hit or blind buy to get that dopamine hit you know within fragrances you can do those things and it's a great distraction to be honest but it's also an artistry some people actually take it as an artistry and they have the money for it but doesn't mean that everyone else's circumstances circumstances are basically the same as yours your circumstances could be much different and maybe you really can't afford this hobby um maybe you are in a situation where you're not as able to be as others are with their um hobbies and their artistries and you know many people that have actually done this this artistry and enjoy it they actually have their own brands um you know they take it up and they kind of make an income from it but you know with this whole perfume community and prices just spiking up i don't even know anymore personally for me i think that with this whole fragrance community situation you know you're always encouraged to look at what's new it's also the same with makeup for example if you're a woman you know makeup also is kind of like this thing where it's like oh this is new in makeup you know this is gonna make you feel and look prettier uh you know it's just kind of like okay we get it it repeats itself history repeats itself us as humans we always look to the new thing we kind of forget about you know our old loves for example in perfume i mean so many of us are caught up in what we like that's maybe new and then we're over it and then we try and look for the next best holy grail or next best thing um but realistically you know we we have that one or two or even three perfumes that we love to bits maybe you have a collection of maybe 10 to 20 perfumes that you just want to use and that's it i mean if you try something new and you just keep building 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 your collection and that's you know you, you end up paying a brick wall because yeah fine you're trying to always look for your new holy grail when you already have your holy grail so um that is a real point to ponder um in my books because i feel I felt the need to kind of speak about this because even for me right now, I don't know which turn my channel is going to take because I do enjoy 
buying samples and decants and really talking about them and seeing what's worth it or not. I mean, you could see in that video, in my video at the moment, you could see a few samples kind of poking out. And, you know, it's been a really great way for me to really drop down the, um, the money I've spent on perfume. Um, sometimes it's worth spending, I don't know, 15 pounds on a decant. It depends on like how much, what, what how much is the, the liquid worth? I mean, you also have Facebook pages that helps kind of put rules out there. So you don't spend too, too much when it comes to decants. There are rules for decants and you spend a certain amount of money. And, you know, there's ones in the UK, I believe there's one in the US and they're both through Facebook, I think. Um, and that's a way for people to really drop down the price. But still, people are so, um, it depends on their situation. They sometimes actually still end up blind buying and they're like, oh my God, this is a love. But then realistically, how, when, when do you hear that they're still coming back to you saying, oh, this is still a love? Um, sometimes it's kind of like, a, okay, I love this, but now I kind of, I'm kind of over it because also with perfumes, you need to remember that when they macerate, they, they kind of change, they develop into something that they should have been in the beginning, um, of what you expect of what you smell in the store. Sometimes when you buy a perfume fresh and it's come from transit, you know, nothing is stabilized in it. So you have to wait for it to stabilize and it could take maybe a month up to a month maybe to yeah completely stabilize and it, it becomes its true developed self again it just needs to be in a static environment instead of just shooking around just like dancing all the way through and really does play up with the composition but yeah mostly what i'm talking about is you know decants are um a great way to buy perfumes and and you know you could just do the same thing with your normal perfumes when they're master just leave them in a certain position yes with atomizers and decanters you know it's easy to just shake them up but still nonetheless let's go back on to the main topic again because we were slightly derailed well i was um so yeah i mean if you're at a point where you're still trying to find out your um favorite type of note in perfumes i mean there are so many huge stores there are samples there are decans there are people selling these things even on i don't know ebay on facebook marketplace or even facebook uh, fragrance groups there are so many other opportunities where you can do what you love still but kind of save a bit of money in your pocket and maybe use it for something else maybe there's a place you want to go to where there's great food maybe there is a museum you want to go to maybe you want to do something nice for your friends or your family maybe there's something you want to do for your um significant other surprise them with something maybe you want to do something in the house or buy something for the house maybe you know there's so many possibilities you could just even buy yourself a nice coffee if you feel you know once a month is justifiable but it's a great idea, I think, to just be able to have more in your pocket. I sound like such a parent right now. <laughs> but I'm saying this in terms of um, if you feel like you can't really be affording a hobby like this. Um, so this is really where this, this video is really targeted towards. And if you feel like you can, it's a sustainable lifestyle for you to have a ton of perfumes, then be my guest but if you feel like you do have some sort of addiction um rather than a passion because by the way a passion is very different to an addiction um when you're passionate about something that's artistry you know there's an artistry uh, element to it but if you are addicted to something you just kind of are in it for the dopamine rush and that's about it you know you smell it and then that's it so, um, yeah, there is a significant difference between passion and addiction for when it comes to perfumery as an artistry or so on and so forth. I mean, I have a lot to thank when it comes to perfumery and, you know, that phase that I had. Uh, not so great, but still, you know, could have saved so much money, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, we're here right now and we learn and we move on. 
So with regards to yeah, what I've learned, I mean, to be honest, now when I have, when I go anywhere, I could really pick up on certain notes and that's great. And I can also now do that with my decants and so on and so forth. And I, I think I could also pick it up from decants as well. Like if a perfume was to have a certain note, you can also do that through decants. You don't, again, have to buy the full bottle. You're trying to support yourself if you are going through this so-called addiction. So make sure that you are kind to yourself as you go through this process. And, you know, some people do these no-buy months or a year or God knows how many no-buy um, uh, no buy days. I, I don't even know anymore. Um, no-buys don't work for me personally. Um, there's also another one where you... Um, you have a budget for how much you can buy things for, like a, a limited buy or a, I, I don't even know what you call it anymore. The terminology is just <laughs> coming out right out of the window. But uh, yeah, there, there are different ways of people budgeting around these things. I mean, you can have that if you feel like it works for you. There's so many different things. We're all human and we're, you know, we all kind of abide by different things. And what works for one person might not work for you. You know, we're all biologically a bit different um so yeah i really do hope that this video was helpful and it was a great little um podcast style video for you and i really hope to hear back from you with your thoughts and ideas and recommendations but do remember to please be kind within the comments section because we are a range of audience uh, audiences so you have the younger to the older uh, folks um so please do make sure that you are kind in the comments and i really cannot wait to hear back from you and i hope that this video has some sort of you know impact on you may it be that it got you thinking uh, whether or not okay yeah i need to stop this or no i can yeah limit my buys or you know decanting is a good option or sampling you know there's so many different um ideas that can really come out of this video and it could be a wake-up call for you, really, um, if you feel like, you know, there's nothing wrong, but then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes sense now um, why I might be doing what I'm doing. So I am so glad to have done this video. It has been weighing heavy on my heart and I really wanted to get this video out there as soon as possible. And yes, thank you so, so much for watching. And um, do make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you on my next. And uh, let's see where this journey takes me. And yeah, bye-bye.